Hello and welcome to Riley on Film. I'm your host, Damian Riley. I've written two books so far and currently I'm on my third. I'm not in film or on film, yet one day, who knows, lightning could strike. I am a bipolar professional here putting up my thoughts about human life. I hope you enjoy your time here. Namaste and God bless you. All right, well, The Blood Beast Terror, I'm re-watching it now because last night I did a full recording and was informed, and it hasn't been the first time, by Spotify for Podcasters, which is where I host my audio on my podcast, they let me know that my podcast about The Blood Beast Terror had been removed because it violated the terms. I can't imagine anything that I said in it that would have violated any terms, but I really guess I better go read the terms because, you know, there might be something silly that I did. And like I said, it's happened before. When it happened before, I tried everything, reposting it, changing the title. But, and I even, this, this is really weird. Get this one. I even took the audio, MP3, uploaded it to my Google Drive, renamed it, and then downloaded it, and they still blocked it. So I'm baffled. I don't know what's going on, which is not a new thing. I always think of myself as real techie, but I guess I'm kind of not. I sort of like... I don't know, time got up, caught up with me because I used to be the guy every teacher would call over to work on their computer and I just understood all everything about technology. Well, it's getting to that point where I'm like, you know, I even I even went on a, 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 a little help uh, forum and they said, uh, oh yeah, it just violates the terms and you have to just look at the terms. They couldn't tell me why. So it almost makes me feel like it was a mistake or on their part or accident because I didn't do any say anything or do anything. There's no cussing, even though I've been cussing more in my output. I need to watch that. That offends people, I've noticed. At least when I do it. Maybe it's just me. I mean, it seems like everybody cusses. Like Gwen Stefani. Oh, my God. They used to call her Potty Mouth. Well, here comes the millions right after the Potty Mouth. So where's my billions? Just kidding. Well, I'm going to f- try and figure that out. But for now, this is actually a risk right now, <laughs> recording this, because if they ban it, uh, you know, then I won't be able to post it. You won't get it. So I'm going to just hope that this one works. But yeah, um, the Blood Beast Terror. I can tell you that upon first watch, it was not my favorite uh Peter Cushing film. Now, if you don't know who he is, he's Grand Moff Tarkin in Star Wars, the original Star Wars, which, personally, I just think that's really where they should have stopped with the first Star Wars. But, you know, (coughs) that's just a well-beaten horse argument, so we won't talk about that tonight. But what I'm going to tell you is that He's really scary, and he's really gifted, and he's really talented, and I love watching him in these old horror movies. It's so neat because, I mean, you know, you can almost, in these horror movies, you can see him walking all creepy down the hall with the shadows and stuff, and you're... It's almost like George Lucas got the ideas, you know, around the Jawa scenes from these horror movies because it's like the music's just like it Grand Moff Tarkin's there and anyway I'm just getting off topic so let's talk about this movie here's the thing I'm just gonna tell you right now and keep this kind of short I'm already at four minutes I try to keep these things short when I don't like the movie um it is it has all the stuff that old Peter Cushing Vincent Price type films have Um, and it is interesting, and they've got a lot of stuff in here about insects, 
incidentally, it's almost like the Silence of the Lambs author watched this and somehow got a subliminal idea. Or maybe he just plagiarized it. Because, like, they have, like, a moth and stuff. And it's just, there's, a, there's like, a carryover there. I'm, I'm almost certain of it. But, yeah, what do I not like about it? Um, too much dialogue. Too much... It doesn't seem to know it's a horror movie. Uh, but it does have some horror parts. But if you're like me, you just want to watch all those old 1960s horror movies with Peter Cushing or Vincent Price. You, I just, I'm trying to watch everyone I can find. Everyone that was ever made. So... This will be right up your alley, if that's what you're about, which you should be about, because all those horror movies in the 1960s are freaking amazing. But yeah, this is neat. There's a, like, it's a strange creature. It's kind of, the creature thing is really odd. You have to watch it and then comment about that. By the way, my comments are on. Hello? Comments are on. Hint, hint. Yeah, see, right now, he's, I'm re, sometimes I rewatch movies while I'm uh, doing my talk about it, and... There's a big moth up on the screen and all the doctors are invited over a round table discussion uh, to talk about this moth because of these murders that are happening and stuff. And uh, so, yeah, um, I guess my final word is I'd probably give it like a 4.5 out of 10, which for a horror movie is not completely out of the game. I'd say three, you're out of the game, but not worth watching. But a 4.5 is almost as good as a good horror movie. So, if you want to watch it, go for it. You have my blessing, and I'll see you next time. Hello there, and thanks for listening to Riley on Film. I'm your host, Damian Riley, finding his way between bipolar and this crazy messed up world that thinks Trumpism is religion. But thanks for listening and I hope you'll come back and I accept all people, love all people, love all people, and I will see you next time.